Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by DX Engineering. DX Engineering offers practically everything you need to outfit your shack, plus the fastest shipping in the industry. In stock items ship the same day, Monday through Friday, until 10 p.m. Eastern. For more information, visit dxengineering.com slash hamnation. By Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchased by visiting casper.com slash hamnation and enter promo code hamnation. And by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash hamnation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 202 for June 24th, 2015. Final field day prep. Hey, how you people doing? You're tuned in to America's greatest amateur radio podcast program, and perhaps even in the world. Well, that may be ambitious, but nonetheless, we do what we can. It's Ham Nation time. Hello, my name is Don, AE5DW, and I'm a hamaholic. Uh, we have uh, uh, the standard uh, uh, cast of, uh, of idiots and, and, and ne'er-do-wells around, with the exception of our fearless leader, Bob Heil. He's off doing... Some kind of, I don't know, Heil stuff. But uh, we do have uh, George Thomas, W5JDX, up in Jackson, Mississippi. How you doing, sir? You getting ready to go out into the boonies and uh, try to make some contacts? I am, Don. We'll talk about that a little bit later in our field day roundup. But, you know, right now I've got a mouse pointer in my eye, and it's very painful. I, I, <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> well, oh, look, it's moving. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Squirtle, if it Maybe gets in I'll... there, just squirt some off in there. That'll... that'll... That'll help you. Maybe it'll go and, away. Yeah. yeah and, and and speaking of off, let's go off to the West Coast and uh, see what's going on with Gordon West over in Costa Mesa. How you doing, sir? We are fine. And remember, Don, I talked about Hawaii coming in on two meters. Well, yeah. Wayne Overbeck uh, worked Hawaii on two, 432. Actually, went to Hawaii, flew there, and then worked us, uh, that is his operators back here, on 2, 432, 222, tried 900, 1,200 easy, went to 3,400 and 2,400, and was almost a clean sweep on microwaves from the Hawaiian Islands to the West Coast on VHF, UHF. And then, of course, six meters went nuts this past few days. And let's hope it goes nuts on field day coming up. Back to you, Don. Boy, you got that right. I, I could probably count on, I don't know, four fingers the number of, of six-meter contacts I've made in 20 years. And just in the last couple of days, I've just, it's been nuts. I would come in here and I'd sit in front of the radio just for hours. I talked to a guy up in Maine the other night. Uh, I talked to uh, Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. The uh, cat in the hat, uh, the kit guy from CQ uh, Magazine and also does the kit building for him at Dayton. Uh, Talked to him on 6, and uh, yeah, it's been gangbusters because of the sun. We'll have uh, a report coming up from uh, Dr. Tamitha Scove on uh, what we can expect uh, for field day. And speaking of field day, she's getting ready. In fact, she is ready. Um I think I I think I can even smell the bug spray from here. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Valerie NV nine L. How how yes, are things I'm in the ready tent? For field day, I look forward to it every year. And okay, maybe I went a little bit overboard, but uh, field day is only three days away. And you know, Don, I'm a yes. hamaholic too. It's been twenty eight hours since my last contact. Uh, oh no, <laughs> man. Back to you. Oh, no. Do you get a chip at do you get a chip after two days? <laughs> um I don't I don't want to make the two day chip. No, I don't I don't think so either. Besides I, I don't know. Gordon hangs around with chip, Margelli, and uh, that's that's a whole different kind of chip. But anyway, we've got a great show tonight. Um we're gonna be talking about field day, we're gonna be talking about uh, solar weather, we're gonna be talking about all kinds of things. We've got uh, uh, some smoke and solder stuff with George, but first let's jump right into Gordon and the short shots. Take it away, my friend Gordon. Well, thank you. And yep, 
Field day is right around the corner and think safety. If you've got those protective lenses, make sure everybody's got them on that is working around beam antennas with the pointy things on each element. But be thinking safety. And of course, I saw Valerie's in the uh, shack or her tent shack. She's got the uh, Heil uh, Pro Set Pro 7. Uh, hers is pink. Uh, this will be red for our operation. And uh, we're going to have plenty of fun on uh, field day. Uh, but we have something new for field day at this end of the circuit. So, Brian, if you want to go ahead and roll the short shots, let's take a look. First of all, we had a lot of folks on the chat room. Was it lithium ion or was it lithium iron phosphate? It was lithium iron. And this is the battery we're going to be working with. This is a four pound battery, four pounds. Now you may think, well, that's not gonna put out much current. Look at that, 27 amp hours, and it's not fussy on how you recharge it back up to 13 or 14 volts. You can hit it if you had to with 24 amps. Uh, they recommend not quite that much, but it comes from Shorei, and it's, uh, that's a Sunnyvale company that imports them from overseas. And every battery is double checked. And um, let me tell you, four pounds for 27 amp hours. I think I've got just the spot for this battery. When you get the battery, you've got to undo this uh, little trap door and put on a jumper. That way they can send it via aeronautical and it passes all the tests. So you can transfer uh, this battery onto an aircraft and not have a problem. Just make sure that once you uh, get ready to go airborne, you uh, pull the small little panel and take out the jumper. Then the battery is essentially dead at the post. Put the jumper back on and you are ready to roll. Well, here it is, the iPortable case that I picked up at Dayton. And um, <clears throat> the case allows uh, two radios to be uh, stuck on uh, and <laughs> literally stuck on, or you can use mounting brackets. Uh, that's a commercial uh, radio we use for the Coast Guard Auxiliary down below. And, of course, the radio above is the uh, uh, well-loved ICOM 706 Mark IIG. Both of those radios with an LCD that you can see in the direct sunlight. Well, we got to get the battery inside this case. And the battery comes with um, its own padding that's double sticky on one side. So that allowed us to find a spot in the case where the battery would easily fit. And at four pounds, you don't even know that you've added it to the case. And we did Velcro strips to keep it in place. Now, Velcro, you know, is a trademark. So if you're talking Velcro, put a little R after it. The folks at Velcro, of course, make the hook and loops, and they're good, just like everyone else's. But where Velcro really excels is after you take out the protective plastic on the glue side of the Velcro pads, that stuff, when you stick it, it is stuck. In fact, that's how the radios are mounted with Velcro, so I can take them out if I need to for another operation. So we uh, took the uh, two Velcros together, removed the little plastic on the sticky stuff, and bango, that battery is in there. Weighs only four pounds, and it will give me plenty of power for field day. There you see I'm ready to slide the gear back in, and it goes in easily with room to spare. And on the left-hand side of that uh, iPortable, and go to iPortable.com to see this uh, neat little case, the case is weatherproof, but it's not waterproof, and it's got a hole in the back with a protective cover, uh, but the case accepts uh, easily two or three radios, including that battery, uh, and uh, you can adjust the shelves by uh, simply uh, getting out your trusty screwdriver. So for field day, we're going to be set. Now, we first gave it a try here, and it was working great. Little solar panel that I added on top does about 800 mils. Uh, mail order, they said it did uh, a lot more, but when you see a panel that small, the most you can get is uh, six to 800 milliamps. There are the radios down below, and I added a little LED strip, and that's an unusual strip in that the strip aims the LED light down, but it was a little too bright. So here comes the rescue. Oh, nope, still too bright, even with potentiometers to turn it down, adding a couple hundred ohms in series. 
still too bright. I just wanted it to shine down. So remember the old days of the 47 light bulb and a little bit of nail polish? Well, we put them on the spot that we didn't want bright. And now, look at that. It lights up the panels quite nicely. So that's what we're going to be using for field day. And uh, if it rains, which it never does in uh, California, we're ready to roll. There's our battery. We've got it all hooked up. It's inside the case. So we are on the air with our little portable setup. And Brian, you can go back to my mug because that's the end of our short shots. And uh, we're set for field day. So we sure hope everybody is safe out there with field day. Um, one thing, Valerie, Valerie, you need this. You need a muff for field day uh, just in case the wind is blowing because any good microphone is going to pick up wind noise. So if you're in the field, be sure and... Uh, uh, get either the Heil uh, little muff that goes over the mic or, uh, of course, they have it on uh, the pro set. But uh, even a dirty sock, and make it a clean sock, will do fine over the mic. So everyone, be safe at field day. Chat room, thanks for all your great suggestions. And uh, look up uh, the Shorey battery because it's an amazing lithium iron phosphate and it'll go and go and go. And we'll report next week how long it goes for. So, Don, back to you. Happy field day, everyone. I want to know, did you steal the, uh, the, the fingernail polish from Susie? Or, because I don't believe I've ever seen you wear that shade. Uh, yeah, normally I have a lighter shade, so I did have yeah. to make that from Susie. Yep. I, I remember from the I remember from the alligator feeding uh, foray that was, yeah you, you you had a lovely fuchsia I believe but that was that was lovely in its own right and speaking of lovely in her own right and, and lovely in her own tent uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's Valerie please rescue us from ourselves at this point what's going on with field day no you were going to talk about six meters huh six meters is nuts oh you just blew my surprise I'm oh, sorry. Well. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> all right. I was going to tell you all about something you could add to your field day group that's going to give, could give you the edge to beat out that club in that next town over that beats you out every year. And this is all about six meters. So if you want to go ahead and roll that. The subject of tonight's video is based on a thing. Can you guess what it is? Yep. It's six meters, also known as the magic band. Now, what makes it so magical? One of the reasons is sporadic E. This is an unusual form of radio propagation because it uses characteristics of the Earth's ionosphere. Most propagation is dictated by the ionospheres of the F region plus normal cyclical propagation. What sporadic E does is bounce signals off smaller clouds, as they're called, of ionized atmospheric gas in the lower E region. Now, these clouds are only about 55 to 100 miles up, which makes these openings very interesting. You could work a guy in New Mexico and not hear the guy next door in Texas. Or with a double hop, you could work the world. Jerry just did his 122nd country on six meters so it, it's a pretty interesting band for all around the other interesting thing six meters is available to extras generals and technicians as well as any advanced classes still out there uh, there is a section reserved for the dx to call cq and that's 50.110 through 50.120 uh, but you can call cq anywhere above that on phone for best DXing, you're going to want a horizontally polarized antenna. Now, Jerry and I just ordered this very antenna and hope to have it up soon, but you don't need anything as extravagant as that. You can get this six meter antenna. DX Engineering has it for less than $130 by Comet. Also, for you home brewers out there, you're going to want to remember this website because he has links to all kinds of homebrew projects from amplifiers and radios to antennas for every band. Plus, June and July is the best time of year spor for sporadic E. So you know what that means? That means it's the perfect thing to have at your field day. And guess what? It's a free station. And what do I mean by free? Well, at field day, if you're a class A entry, you can have that free go to station. But you can also have another free station if it's 50 megahertz or up. 
And the next reason it's so magical, you never know when it's going to come and how long it's going to last. So I'm going to demonstrate for you some of the magic or mystery of six meters in an hour and a half period. I'm going to show you what the bands look like today, Sunday, June 21st, which is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everybody. And the first day of summer, and it's 1800 UTC. And as you can see, there's some signals down in CW or the digital portion but not a lot going on up here on sideband. But on six meters, that can change. Okay, now here's what it looks like at 1830 UTC. So just a half hour later. Now, on sideband, 50.110 through 50.120 is the DX calling frequency. New signals higher up. Let's go check this one out. Um, Dipole's working good. Uh, you should be able to make contacts today. Dan has been open. Uh, East Coast guy has been working Europe, which is, I think, the first. And um, I'm hearing stuff off the back, uh, California, Washington, Oregon. And uh, I'm hearing the XD2 beacon in here. It's uh, down around 50.015 or something like that. Anyway, it's here now. But uh, anyway, this is the kind of conditions that you can work out even with the Dipole. Zero. Okay, here it is now, 1930 UTC, and look at the bands now. And the pool that would be down to view, the south facing side of the beaches down there in North Carolina for sure. I have, uh, I have, uh, in New Hampshire. <laughs> Uh, okay, I got the Echo Mike 87. Okay, QSL, thanks for the call. And enjoy the opening. Whiskey Alpha 1 Zulu. Okay, we're open to one land from nine land. So an hour ago, we were open to Colorado. Now we're open to the East Coast. Why else is six meters so magical? Because F2, transequatorial, tropospheric, scatter, and meteor scatter propagation also all exist on six meters. Now what F2 is, it's... The, that layer can also propagate VHF signals several thousands of miles. This F2 layer is the highest reflecting layer at the very top of that on your screen there, about 200 miles up. Now, when sunspot activity is high, the F2 layer can become intensely ionized due to radiation from the sun. And this is where you can work some of your best DX. Transequatorial propagation, also known as TEP for six meters, occurs during late afternoon and early evening over a maximum distance of about 3,700 miles. What happens, they believe, is a high electron concentration is found on each side of the magnetic equator, usually between 10 to 20 degrees latitude. Tropospheric ducting is where propagated signals travel in part of the atmosphere in a warm, high-pressure system. This is most prevalent during the summer and fall month. Now, scatter is where your radio signal will intersect with another radio signal. And where they intersect, usually only about six miles up, is where you have scatter and you can work each other. Now with meteor scatter, you're bouncing off the ionized trail left behind the meteor. If you ever hear that guy out there for like two seconds, as clear as can be, and then he's gone, you're both working off the same ionized trail of the meteor. And for those of you who really like a challenge, there's also moon bounce on six meters. So get out, play on six meters, and you'll understand why they call it the magic band. And, you know, I recorded that thing on Sunday, and I wish I would have, if I waited to the last minute and recorded it yesterday, the bands were insane yesterday. I know, Don, you got out and you played on the bands yesterday, and so did I. I think I got at least 20, 25 new grid, grid squares just yesterday alone. Back yeah. to you, Don. I tuned around just now while you were doing your presentation. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing right yeah. now. So it's, it, it okay. comes. I hope it's open for six. Yes, no I mean, kidding for field, for field day. day. That would be awesome. Thank you, Val. Appreciate you being here Welcome. tonight. Let's talk about uh, one of our great sponsors uh, of the program, and that is DX Engineering, because it is field day, and you might be needing some stuff. Field day is, I mean, you're up against the last minute right now, Clark. Uh, you want your field day supplies, you get them at DX Engineering, because if you see something that you need, make sure you get your order in tonight. 
so that it has a really good chance of being at your doorstep on time. And if you do order it tonight, chances are you will get it by field day, but you got to do it tonight. Here are just a few things you might need uh, for field day. Uh, lightweight, versatile headsets keep you comfortable for hours of outdoor operating. Standard headsets uh, feature the uh, dynamic microphone that builds upon uh, Heil Sound's decades of professional audio experience. They all have heavily padded earpieces for extra comfort, regardless of the environment that you're operating in. You also want to check out the Heil's IC line of headsets made specifically for ICOM radios. The engineering has dozens, literally dozens of different headset styles. Check them all out online. Last week, we told you about the wire antennas for field day. The antenna is only part of the equation. You got to have to have a tuner to make sure that it's matched to the radio. And DX Engineering has the LDG line of automatic antenna tuners. Available for all the popular HF bands. They cover 1.8 to 54. They're uh, perfectly suited to the dipole, the vertical, the windham, uh, what have you. The beam doesn't matter what you got. It'll, it'll work. They'll tune up to 2,000 separate memories. Also, uh, near instant tuning typically occurs in fraction of seconds. These things are great tuners. They can also be powered by an external source, and many of them will get power from the radio. Several models run on battery, too, which, again, makes it great for field day. If you're planning to work CW, might be a good time to upgrade your key. DX Engineering carries Vibroplex. And there's a reason that uh, Vibroplex can be found in every serious contesting station all over the planet. They offer anvil-like reliability, precision operation. Uh, Vibroplex keys are rugged enough for field day, yet their beauty and elegance make them equally at home displayed on a bookcase. These things are great, and they work great. DXEngineering.com has everything you need, the full assortment of Vibroplex keys, paddles, and accessories. And, of course, DX Engineering, you know, ships faster than anybody else in the industry. If you get your order in by... 10 o'clock Eastern tonight, and if it's in stock, they'll put it on a truck. It'll head your way tonight, and chances are you'll get it by field day. Proven products, expert advice, DX Engineering helps you shrink the globe. I want you to request your catalog or shop online 24-7 at dxengineering.com slash hamnation. And DX Engineering, thank you so much for being a part of, uh, our, of our little thing here. Get ready to go to uh, Smoke and Solder, but uh, George, Gordon, you guys remember... Uh, was it uh, not field day this this year, but field day last year when I was there? We met uh, we met a little little guy named Christopher and his dad Jocelyn. You guys uh, remember that? Well, yeah. Christopher KD eight YVJ is now a general, and I was tuning around uh, on uh, on Kids Day, and I and I found him. So this card is going to be going to our uh, to our little buddy Chris. So, yeah, he's a, he's a general. So, uh, uh, Christopher, KD8, YVJ is now a general. So happy about that. And we're going to, I'm going to see him at Huntsville this year, too. So, I'm very excited about that. But I'm also excited, excited about Smoke and Solder because uh, this by far is, is the gem of Ham Nation. Everybody loves Smoke and Solder. I'm telling you, George, you're a hit. What are we doing tonight? Well, tonight we're going to. Talk a little bit about maybe improving your HT a little bit. You know, if you got one of these or or any of these, it doesn't really have to be a blue one. It could be any color. Probably black, I think, is what most of them are. Anyway, there's a, a little trick that you can do, and probably a lot of you here have already heard of this. It's often called a tiger tail. I don't know why they called it that. I call it a ground radial, but let's just take a look. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to try a little trick that you see posted around from time to time just to see how well it works. You know, if you've got a handy talkie, most of them have got 5 watts of output power. You can remove the rubber duck and screw in an external antenna, and you'll have much greater range out of these. But is there anything you can do with it in portable configuration? Well, you can upgrade the antenna on it. And that will make quite a bit of difference, but there's still one other trick that you can do that will even help an improved antenna or a short rubber duck, and that is add a ground radial to it. It's simple enough to do, too. Basically, what we need to do is take a piece of wire and cut it a quarter wavelength, which for two meters would be about 19 and a half inches. For 440, it would be about 6.5 inches and connect it to the ground of the antenna. On this particular ICOM rig here, if you unscrew it, you see the antenna connector is a female SMA. And we've got a nice big area here we can connect a ground to. We'll just take a little crimp on terminal. And this one is not quite big enough to fit over there. 
So what I'll do is use our stepper bit to go in and ream that hole out, make it a little bigger so that it will fit. After I got through reaming it, this is what I ended up with. And that will just slip right down over there. Now I can screw my antenna back on. And typically what you would do, before you put it on of course, is solder your 19 and a half inch radial and just let it hang down below. Well, you know, I might not need that radial all the time. So what I decided to do is just cut out my 19 and a half inch piece of wire, but put a banana plug on one end and measure it from the tip of that banana plug all the way to the other end of the wire to give me 19 and a half inches. Then I can take that wire and I've stretched out the end of the terminal here just enough where I can plug that connector on it so I can take this on and off as I'd like. You know with a VHF or UHF antenna if you move it just to slide them out it can make all the difference between getting a signal and not. So what we're going to do is set the handy tail key on top of a wooden ladder and try our best not to move it during this test. So I'll zoom on in so we can see the meter here. We're going to try to key up a repeater that's located some distance from here. W5JDX. Nothing at all. Now you'll notice that I'm running low power setting number one, which is, is pretty doggone low. Now let's add our ground radio to it. We'll just plug it in here on the side. And without changing the power, let's see if we can key it up now. Look at there, we have a full strength signal. From not being able to even bring up the repeater to where we're getting a full scale reading back, it is a pretty good change. Now, I could probably bring up this repeater if I raise the power on the handy talkie, but why waste the battery if I don't need to? So let's try this with the improved antenna, the 50th anniversary edition antenna that comes with this handy talkie. It's quite a bit stronger than this little stop rubber duck. Now here's a larger antenna, and just by looking at it, you can guess that it's probably going to perform a little better than the stock. So let's see how much better. We're still on the low power setting number one. Let's try keying it up. Less than half scale. All right, let's add our ground radial to that. And now let's try it. Full scale, full quaddy. So it makes a big difference. If you need that extra little bit to get to the repeater or to another station, or you don't want to waste your battery. Try adding this little ground radial on there. I think you'll be impressed by how much difference it really does make. W5JDX. And it really does make a lot of difference. Um, you know, I've heard people talk about these for years, and I've used them before, but I've never really just sat down and did a comparison like that. And, uh, boy, quite a bit of difference. And that repeater is... Oh, at least 25 miles from where I am, so uh, that's not bad for half a watt. Well, you know, last week I built that ballon. It was a 4 to 1 ballon, and it was a little bit different because on the transmission line that was wrapped around the toroid, I put some Teflon tubing on it. And I asked, why did we use the Teflon sleeving on the 4 to 1 ballon, but not on the 1 to 1 ballon? And we had a winner, and that is Marty, KC1CWF. And he said, the reason you use it is to space the wire so that the impedance is 100 ohms. And that's correct, Marty, because when they're right side by side with just the uh, varnish on the wires, it's 50 ohms. But when you spread them just that little bit with the Teflon tubing there, instant 100 ohms. So... But congratulations, we're going to send you this copy of QRP Projects from Down Under, a great book by Drew Diamond, VK3XU, that's published by MFJ. Some really good projects in there. You're going to enjoy this. We'll get that out to you this week. And for next week, we're going to give away this Heil lighted desk stand. Now, 
I just noticed, for whatever reason, I don't have a question written down here. So I'm going to take care of that while we're finishing up with uh, the rest of the show here. And we'll be back around to field day time. And uh, when we start talking about field day, I'll have a question just especially for field day. And we'll give this mic stand away to someone. But right now, let's go back to Don and see what's going on in the news. Let's do that. We're, uh, we're still on hiatus with Newsline, unfortunately, but we're working on getting that back. Um, uh, I can tell you that uh, the memorial service for Bill Pasternak was held uh, last weekend. And um, from the pictures that I saw on Facebook, it's, uh, he's in a, a beautiful final resting place. Uh, he's got a great view and uh, uh, just, um, wow, we're, we're still shocked that he's gone, but um, we're, we're all working on, on getting things back together. But what we do have tonight in, in lieu of the news is we do have uh, an update from Dr. Tamitha Scove. Now, sunspots have been going completely nuts. She recorded uh, this, you know, it started like Sunday night, Monday, is when Monday and Tuesday it got nuts. Well, she... Uh, she has a, a long-form video posted at spaceweather.tv. It's like six and a half minutes long that she did on Monday. And I was going to run that, and then uh, she said, wait, I've got an update for you today. So she produced this for us this afternoon. So let's go and take a look at the update from Dr. Tamitha Scove. Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast update for June 23rd. The sun has been crazy busy this week, and it's mainly due to Region 2371, which has been firing M flares and solar storms pretty much since it rotated into view this past week. Now, it's already fired three major solar storms that are Earth-directed, and we've got two of them that have been hitting Earth now and have been causing all sorts of havoc, and we've got one more that is en route and should hit us early on the 25th, maybe even late on the 24th. And how we know this is that we've got these beautiful halo eruptions that uh, are come at, that are in chronographs that actually show this big ring around the sun. And when you see that, you know it's Earth directed. So this has been pretty confirmed. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see just in the last couple days, we had an M2 flare that launched an Earthward directed solar storm that's hitting us now. And then uh, late on the 22nd, we had an M6.5 flare that's launched that second solar storm that's about to hit Earth uh, on the 25th. And both of these flares, along with these solar storms, have also spawned a solar radiation storm that has been kind of toggling between the S2 and S3 threat levels. And what that means is it completely annihilates the ham radio bands. If you look at a map of the Earth right now, you can see all this red. This is all due to those solar radiation storms. And those storms not only annihilate the ham bands, they also cause uh, radio communication problems for airlines. So we are actually having airlines right now that are rerouting their fl flights, not only to spare the crew and the passengers from an, a heightened radiation dose, but also to make sure that their communications don't have outages. So this is just an update. I'll be sure to have a full report later this week, but if you want to follow the events as they unfold and get more near real-time information about how bad the amateur radio bands are being affected, which is pretty bad right now, be sure to follow me on Twitter or communicate with me on Facebook or monitor spaceweather.tv and we'll be able to give you a better feel for how the ham bands are doing and how well they'll do into this weekend because I know there's a big contest this weekend. So I'll keep my fingers crossed. Meanwhile, pull out your uh, camera and take some pictures of Aurora if you happen to be at high latitudes. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching. Yeah, absolutely. Be sure and follow her on Twitter because she posts all the time. And I, I saw somebody in the in the chat room just say she must be a, a Nighthawk because she she does. She she will be up till uh, there <laughs> was one time uh, she was she was tweeting at six o'clock in the morning. She had been up all night uh, watching the solar weather. She's just she's amazing. So, uh, Dr. Scove, thank you so much for, uh, for what you do here uh, for us on Ham Nation. All right, let's talk about uh, another sponsor of the show here, and then we'll get on to field day. Um, you know, if you're going to go and do the 24 hours, you're not going to be in a comfortable bed, okay? If you're doing the 24 hours of field day, you're going to be in a cot, or you're going to be sitting in a folding chair all night on the radio, hunched over. And when you get home, you're going to want to get in a really, really comfortable bed. Well, let me recommend Casper. Casper is an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of 
the price because everybody deserves a great night's sleep, especially after field day. Now, you can get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash ham nation. Enter the promo code ham nation. Now, Casper is an online retailer. They sell premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. And they're really, they're revolutionizing the whole mattress industry by cutting the cost of dealing with resellers and showrooms. And they pass that savings directly on to you, the consumer. They're aggressively and obsessively engineered and they sell them at a fair price. Two technologies, latex and memory foam, come together for better nights and brighter days. It's a comfortable mattress, has just the right sink and bounce. It comes to you in a box. And it's it's just, it's amazing. I think we've got, do we have video of Leo testing out the uh, the mattress? Because it's just, it's, it's incredible to watch the unboxing of this whole thing. But the Casper mattress provides long-lasting comfort and support. And uh, again, Leo tried it out and, and, it, and he loves it. You can easily buy one online, completely risk-free. And, and of course, you have to try out a mattress. And you have to try it out for, I mean, you go into the mattress store and you lay on it for 15, 20 seconds and that does nothing. You need to try sleeping on it. And that's why Casper offers free delivery. Watch this. Free delivery and painless returns with a 100-day test period so you don't have to lie down in a showroom. Watch watch this. Is, uh, of course, this is sped up, but uh, literally you pull it out of the box, you unroll it and uh, put it together, and in just a matter of moments, you have a mattress. It's just in, incredible. It's uh, I guess it's vacuum-packed, and, and, and it fills up with air. I'm not exactly sure, but watch this. Here we go. Here's the Leo test. Yeah, there you go. It gets the, uh, the, the, the big uh, thumbprint of approval from, uh, from Mr. Laporte. And statistically, lying on a bed in a showroom has absolutely no correlation as to whether it's the right bed for you. That's why you need the 100-day sleep test. And, of course, they're made in the USA. Get a Casper mattress, 500 bucks for a twin, 950 for a king. Compared to industry averages, that's an outstanding price. And you can save an additional 50 as a, as a Ham Nation audience member by going to casper.com slash Ham Nation. Enter the promo code Ham Nation. Casper.com slash Ham Nation. Promo code Ham Nation. You too can be just as pleased as Leo Laporte is with his Casper mattress uh, with, with yours. So uh, there you go. Check it out. Casper mattress. You're going to wish you had one of those after field day. Eh? Um, unless you've got a really, really comfortable tent like Valerie does. And even then, you know, you know I don't know what what your sleeping arrangements are going to be there, Val, but I bet you're not going to have a Casper mattress. That'd be a heck of a thing to take for field day, wouldn't it? Just roll it back up, throw it in the box, throw it in the back of your truck and and uh, and take it out there for your, your very own Casper mattress. Well, I do you have know, the double high air mattress, the queen double uh -huh. high. I, yeah. I guess well, I'm a little pampered. <laughs> That 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 ain't that that won't hold a candle to a cast, Rob. I'll tell you that. Now, Bob is not no. here. You know where Bob's going to be? Bob is going to be at the West Shum Field Day event. Um, pull that that uh, CE Multiphase website up, if you will, Brian, because um, West Shum, of course, with uh, Central Electronics, um, they're doing the big Field Day thing again this year. And, and Bob, I believe, is going up there. Um, very special Field Day. It's at the farm of West Shum and his personal Central Electronics vintage gear. Of course, he is the man who brought single sideband to amateur radio. This is a super fun event. Go on ce-multiphase.com and check that out. That is just going to be amazing. And again, I think uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the farm right there. I believe Bob is going to be out there. And we also mentioned that uh, Ted Randall... Uh, and his shortwave station, WTWW there in Nashville, he's going to be doing a field day thing where you can actually call in and give him your field day reports. Now, he's not going to put your station on the air, but uh, he might put you on the air. You never know. Here is the phone number if you want to call up Ted, 615-813-0173. 615-813-0173. Uh, promote the ham radio hobby to the entire world on a powerful international shortwave radio station, WTWW, by calling in from your field day location. Tell the world about it. Put your uh, members of your field day group on the air. Pass the phone around. Uh, special guests, your local city officials, let them all catch the excitement from the young kids to the teens that are visiting your field day site. Uh, let uh, prospective hams uh, talk about uh, getting excited, watching your field day activities and do it all on this international shortwave radio station, WTWW. Again, the number is 615-813-0173. So that's just a couple of things going on field day wise. 
Val, what else have you got up your sleeve for field day? You know, I thought, well, maybe there's some new hams out there and they're not really belong to a club, so they cannot participate in field day. Well, yes, you can. You can actually go online to the ARRL website and you can go on their locator and find clubs in your area that are having field day and just show up. And I am I bet you if they have a go to station, you'll get to operate. But if you can't or don't want to go out or afraid to go uh, show up at one of these field day sites, you can actually operate from your home. And I have a little graphic there, Brian, if you want to show that of all the different classes for field day and kind of go over that real quick if we have time. Now, um, there's different class levels. Most people, most groups are a class A level. That's for clubs or non-clubs. If it's three or more people and you are not using commercial power. So it can be a generator, it can be batteries, it can be solar. But if you do use just battery, if you go with the class A battery level, then you cannot use a generator. It has to be battery, solar power, a bicycle that powers your radio, anything like that. Um, now, if you go, if there's two people or less, it's just, it's the exact same as class A, except it's called class B. Um, all the other rules pertain. You cannot be in, a, in your home or anything. You have to be at a site specifically set up for field day, two or less people not using commercial power and you're a class B. Also, you can do class B battery as well. Now, if you're in your car or mobile, you can be a class C, but a lot of you new hams, get out there and be a class D. And uh, you're just using your commercial power from home. Now, if you are a class D, you cannot work other class D stations. Otherwise, it's just a regular old contest. Or you can be in your home and just make sure all your radio equipment and everything is plugged into a generator. And then you're a class E. And then there's also class F, which is the EOC or emergency operation centers, which are usually more government type uh, centers and operations. Now, the number you add to that is the number of HF stations you have. So if you have four radios that are going simultaneously or can go simultaneously, at the, you know, go at the same time, then you would be a four, say alpha, something like that. Now, if you're any of these other stations, you can also get what we call those free stations. You can have a get on the air station or go to station. And that one has to be a call sign that is different from your field day call sign. So that's an extra station you can have at your thing and say you had three radios and you're a three alpha and you set up the go to station, you still remain a three alpha. Now, you can also, in addition to that, have a VHF station. And that's why I was talking about six meters. If you want to put a radio in a tent somewhere at your three alpha station and have it set up for 50 megahertz or higher, and with the way six has been acting lately, 50 megahertz is probably going to be the money band for that VHF station. That's also free station. So you still would be in the three alpha class if you have your three radios on HF. Another radio on two meters, maybe for GOTA under a different call sign. And the fifth station uh, is a VHF station, and you're still only considered a three alpha. So um, I know it's a lot to take in. It's kind of confusing for you new guys out there. But um, uh, And there's my little riddle at the bottom. I mean, I am going to be operating. Um, we're going to have two main transmitters. They're going to be on HF. We're going to be out at a park. We're going to be using generator power. Plus, we're going to have a station set up for six meters and two meters. Go, and that's the two meter one's going to be under a completely different call sign. So what class do you think that would be? Well, since there's going to be about 10 of us, since there's more than three of three or more than of us, it's alpha. We have the two HF stations. So we're a two alpha, even though we technically have four radios on the air. So I hope that I hope I didn't make it more confusing, and I hope that helps you out. But if you don't get to a field day site, just operate from home. You can be the um, Class C from your car or vehicle or the Class D from your home if you're plugged into normal uh, your normal electrical outlets in your house. Or if you plug it into a generator outside of your house, then you can be a Class E, and you can work anybody if you're a Class E. But if you're a D, you can only work Ds. That and something else, something <laughs> else, something else, Val, to remember, if you're going to do, uh, say, a mixture, say you're going to go out with your club, let's say, 
And I may actually do this. Uh, take some time to go out to my local club, which is the Pearl River County Amateur Radio Club, uh, W5PMS. If I go out and I work uh, with, the, with the W5PMS group and then I come back home, and they're, of course, Alpha. And if I come back home and get on my station and I'm a Delta from my house, I cannot contact W5PMS. That's in the rules. I, I was reading that earlier today or yesterday. So that's just something to remember. You, you, you can't say, oh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to get a contact and give you guys a contact. It, it, that doesn't count. So, Well, uh, also, too, if you're a class, any of these battery classes, it's five yeah. watts or less. And right. if you have a VHF station or a go-to station, those also have to be five watts or less and using yeah. the battery and the solar. Right. So go to the AWRL website and go into the contest uh, section and download the whole field day packet and take the time reading it. There's a lot of information there. Um, and, uh, you know, you got to follow the rules, obviously, just like any other contest. But, uh, you know, there's a reason why field day is the most popular contest around is because it's so much fun and anybody can get out and do field day. You, know, you don't have to have a a kilowatt station and a and a you know a huge antenna farm you can you know do it from your car and and have a whole lot of fun you can do it qrp with a wire up in the air and have just a ton of fun so get out and enjoy field day and make some contacts and of course the main thing what field day is field day is emergency preparation so uh you know we're in hurricane season down here and we're coming up on the 10th anniversary of hurricane katrina august 29th uh, in fact, there's going to be a special event station for the Katrina survivors that we've talked about uh, in previous shows, and we'll bring that up again as it uh, as it comes a little closer. That's something that I'm definitely going to be a part of. But um, that's what Field Day is all about. Field Day is to get out and set up in adverse conditions and make sure that when the poop hits the prop, you can get out and make contacts and pass traffic and possibly save lives. And, of course, you can have fun in the whole process of practicing. And that really is what it's all about, right? And if you're, if you're shy about getting out to one of these parks and, and you see a group out there, don't be because they get points if they get visitors showing up at right. their station. They have a sign-in and they have all kinds of things. So you're giving them points. They're, they're happy to see you show up. And usually the food is amazing. Yeah, we tried to spell out W5ABD and bacon in the frying pan several years ago. And <laughs> I, think, I think we were a letter short. It didn't start out that way, but it, it kind of happened. And in fact, um, that was the West Side Amateur Radio Club over in uh, on the West Bank across the river from New Orleans. And we set up a whole vintage gear uh, station. It was it was all static. You know, there wasn't uh, wasn't uh, no power applied to it, no antennas. It was all for display. But uh, we had a lot of people come by looking at the old radios and comparing the old radios to the newer radios that we were operating on. And uh, we did it in a park. And that's what Field Day is all about. It's uh, it's it's getting our capabilities uh, in front of the public and practicing for emergencies. And that's what it's all about. And of course and you, you know, want to do it. Go ahead. Oh, you, I was going to say my first field day, when I first got licensed, I, I, I looked online on the AWR locator and I, I printed off a map and I just went around field day hopping. And mm -hmm. that's how I got to meet the group I'm with now for field day. I had a ball and just checking out all the different field day sites. I went to a QRP site. One, I had to ride the bike to get the radio going. I mean, I had a ball just going around field day hopping all day. Right. And you, you especially want to do that on Sunday morning because you'll, you'll find the one with the best breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all, the have, best? They, all, they all have wives with amazing, who are amazing cooks. <laughs> that's right. The best breakfast and the best coffee. Now, of course, George, George sets up out in the sticks away from everybody because, uh, you know, he's, a, he's antisocial. But. Uh, Tommy and, uh, <laughs> and myself and Wayne, yeah, we, we go off the grid. We try to get as far away from the public as we can. No reason in particular. We just, you know, we're Southern boys. We like to camp out, although June would not be our favorite month to do that. Hey, that's when field day is. But we're going to be three Alpha Mississippi. That means we're going to set up three stations. Well, there's only three of us there. If someone else shows up, we'll be happy to let them operate along with us. But since we only have three stations set up, those will be HF stations. We'll be a three Alpha because we'll be running generators. And we're... Um, we're carrying three generators with us, so we'll we'll be okay there. We've got a 5KW and two 3KWs, and we're just running 100-watt rigs and some lights so, uh, and plenty of fans. 
But we're going to try something a little different this year. I don't know how it's going to work out, Don, but Wayne has decided that he has a small room air conditioner that we can take some Visqueen and put over those tents and air condition them. So I'll have to get back with you on that, let you know how that ex actually works out. I hope it works out well, but uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see on that one. Well, you know, we were talking about uh, uh, the real antenna field day, what it's, um, you know, what it's meant for. Well, that's going to be my question. If you'd like to win this uh, Howl lighted mic stand, well, answer this question for me. What year was the first field day held? And if you, if you can find the answer to that, then email me, hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could win. And we'll also, next week, we'll talk about what was the reason for that very first field day. Uh, it's not a big surprise, but it's a little different than, um, you know, probably what uh, your first answer would be there. Well, right now, we've got a message from ICOM here, and then we'll be right back. Get out and get mobile. Whether you're looking for a handheld, mobile, or HF rig, ICOM has a radio to get you operating on your next adventure. Take ICOM's IC7100 D-Star radio with you this season. An angle control head and touchscreen provide user-friendly operation. A large internal speaker delivers clear digital audio, and it's perfect for multi-band and all-mode communications. Interested in easy hands-free operation when you hit the road? ICOM's analog IC2730A mobile and the D-Star ID5100A both feature optional Bluetooth capability, a large backlit screen for high contrast viewing, and 50 watts output power on both VHF and UHF. Go far with ICOM's D-Star Dual Bander, the ID51A+. Check out the Near Me repeater function for D-Star as well as analog repeaters. Free downloadable RSMS1A Android app plus integrated GPS. Hit the trail with ICOM's IC7410. This HF rig is solid in performance and construction. High-grade DSP, all-mode operation, easy menu and ergonomic dials, and large heat sink for a heavy duty cycle operation. Make sure you visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM's complete line of amateur radio products. And you can tune in and enter to win after each episode of Ham Nation. Go to icomamerica.com slash ham nation. Throw your name in the hat, you might win something like a T-shirt or a hat or any number of great ICOM swag prizes there. Plus, you can learn how you could win the monthly grand prize drawing for a new radio. And for June, the grand prize is going to be the IC2730A Practical Analog Dual Band Dual Watch Mobile with 50 watts on both VHF and UHF, a large, easy-to-see display, optional Bluetooth headset, wideband receive, and a lot more. So go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation after this in each episode of Ham Nation and register to win. Sign up, good luck, and don't forget to follow icomamerica.com on Facebook and Twitter. And now let's, uh, well, what do we want to do now, Don? Is it time that we get a yeah, few chat room questions? I think we bring Amanda in and, and we'll see what she's got going on for field day. And before we all wrap things up, we need to tell everyone what our field day call signs are going to be. If we're going to be going under a club call sign or if you're going to be operating from home or uh, using your own call sign, we all need to uh, we all need to do that. So let's get Amanda in first and let's see uh, about, hey, darling, how, how, what's field day going on for you? What are you going to be doing for field day? Um, okay, well, so you stole my question. It's cool. Um, we're going to be a three alpha here uh, in Canyon City. And this year, okay, I have to say this is in memory, and it's not in memory, it's just for him. He broke his hip this year in C0A. Chuck, I'm so sorry. He's been our field day mascot for the last like 25 years, so obviously before I was an operator. And um, he's not going to be with us. So they have um, adopted my call sign for this year's uh, club call. So I I'm kind of a little thank you so much, you guys, for doing that. So we're going to be a three alpha. And uh, Val, um, I'm sorry, I missed it. I think I, I had shut off my browser. What did you say your club is going to be working under and what um, what category? Val? 
the call we're using is uh, N9 Alpha Whiskey or Appreciates okay. Whiskey, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I know Don likes that too. And what is your category? <laughs> we're two alpha. Two alpha. Okay. Yeah, I got that now. And uh, George, what are you guys going to be operating as? Well, I think probably this year we're going to go as uh, N5 ZNO. Uh, November 5, Zulu, November Oscar. That's Tommy's call sign. We've been using mine in the past, but uh, I think we'll use his this year. Uh, we're not a club. You know, we're just three guys going out in the woods and uh, hoping to have a good time with out passing out from heat stroke. And we'll be three alpha Mississippi. Okay, very good. And Don doesn't operate, but you're going to try to go home and work as many as possible as a one Delta, right? Well, I might, yeah, I'm, I'm, I may do both. Uh, my, my local club is Whiskey 5 Papa Mike Sierra W5 PMS for Pearl River County, Mississippi, W5 PMS. <laughs> and uh, so if, if I'm out there, I'll be, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's Snickers, Snickers from the uh, peanut gallery. But nonetheless, they're grumpy operators, too, I got to tell you, they really are. Um, That's funny. A couple of them. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, imagine. to me, I'm a printer, so PMS means all about colors. Look yeah, at the color exactly. charts. That's what it means. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah, colors. That's it. And so, uh, the, getting with getting with the appreciates whiskey. The the club call for the the club that I was president of a, a couple of times over in the in the in New Orleans, the West Side Amateur Radio Club. They were uh, Whiskey Five Alpha Bravo Delta, and the club the original club was located in in the uh, New Orleans suburb of Algiers. So they were the Algiers beer drinkers. Or, or Amer American beer drinkers for the for the contest for people who don't know about Algiers, but yeah, so the American beer drinkers. So anyway, if I'm if I'm with Pearl River, it'll, it'll be W five PMS, and if I'm home, it'll be E five DW. So there you go. Okay, so Val, I I'm sorry, I even got text messages while you were talking about the one Delta. I I guess that we haven't paid enough attention to the rules, right, Jeff? Because we had no idea that if you're a one Delta, that you could only work other. Deltas. Um, no, no, you cannot work other deltas. Oh, you cannot if work you're a other delta, deltas. You cannot right. work another delta. Otherwise, okay. it would just be another contest. You know, okay. everybody's contact, sitting yeah. at home working each other. Yeah, if you're a delta, okay. you can work an alpha, a bravo, a, Char a Charlie, an echo. You know, and, a, and but no a more deltas. You cannot work okay. another delta. A delta cannot work a delta. Okay. Right. Alpha, right. right. A B D. Anybody but delta. Yeah. Ah, that's yeah. A, that's a good way of putting it. Thank you so much. You and sorry, I'm holding my QSL card here. Val and I were talking about this a little bit this week. Brian, if you don't mind bringing up that little snapshot for me. Okay, so ah. I made out this. <laughs> it's the only actually made up one at work, and I forgot it. So this one was real quick and easy for me. Um, this is me filling out a card for Valerie for when I worked her as a wild card. Just wanted to go over just a you little things, you guys. I received a few cards this week that were absolutely wrong. So just want to make sure you guys get the basics correct. And Val, you're going to jump in here because I don't actually know the answer to some of this. First of all, obviously, you put a little note in there if you want to. Not necessary. I just like to do that. Also, you can see I have printed on there some of my information, which I was using as my rig and my antenna. Guess what? They're old cards, so that wasn't actually right. So I actually wrote in there what I was using for my antenna and as my rig, which was the G5 RV in the ICOM 7600, which I think helped a lot, by the way. Anyhow, um, moving on from there, I have who I'm making a contact with, November Victor 9 Lima, Miss Val there, which was awesome, by the way. She sounds so great all the time. I have the correct date. I have the month. I have the year. Now... Let's go to the UTC time. This is very, very important if you want a guaranteed contact or confirmation. I got a few cards that put their local times in there, such as 1045 p.m. Now, that's not going to get you verification. Um, Val knows a little bit more about this. So when I move on to the frequency, Val, is the frequency absolutely important or just writing 20 no, meters? No, you can just put 14. You don't have to put okay. 14.278 or, or whatever. You okay. can just put 14 because you may have been doing split as well. So you don't have to do that. And also, if you make a mistake anywhere on that card, you need to throw it away because it won't count. Start over. 
Very good. There you go. A correct yeah. build. So out he's got fourteen dot two four zero, but you can just put fourteen megahertz. That's good. Okay, that'll work now too. If, if it's wrong, so if you guys made a contact on fourteen two eight four and they put two fourteen dot two eight zero, would it still be correct? I, yeah, I, I mean, I, that's a judgment call. I don't think it's an issue. You're on fourteen megahertz. I don't know. I, I think since they confirm it in LOTW, I would go ahead and say that it's okay on your card as well. Um, but yeah, you yeah. guys make sure the you time is important, the time. band is yeah. important, the mode is important, and the call sign. Absolutely. Yeah, so, so yeah. Um, if you guys put the wrong time on my card, don't worry. I looked it up, and when I sent you a card back, I did put the UTC time on there so that you at least have a correct one. Um, so, but if you're trying to make those DX contacts, trust me, it's probably very, very important. And again, Val could probably say yes a lot more than I could on that, right, Val? <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten some cards in the mail and boy, I, I can't find them, you know, at all. Um, also, too, you may get cards in the mail and you're not going to find them in your database. And if you look closely, they were shortwave listeners. So that's a whole different thing. Maybe I'll do a thing on how to do that. But um, that's why sometimes they have a different call, you know, weird number with their prefix. But um yeah, it's important to get everything right that you can, yeah, obviously. And if you ever make a mistake on your card, you need to rip it up and throw it away and start again. You cannot cross things off um, or scribble things out on a QSL card if they're going to, if they want to count, count it. That's, that's important. Thank you, Val, for your input on that. I appreciate it. All right. And um, for other announcements, WT6H Mike would like us to all know that the special event certificates are now available. So go ahead and... Uh, fill in their uh, boxes and say, I, I want my special certificate. So, and again, thanks you guys for everyone that participated in that. It was a really fun time. And I don't know, I'm just, every day I keep getting more and more QSL cards with envelopes to send back. And that you guys, I think I've done a good job. I think I'm about three behind right now. So um, one more announcement, and then I'm just going to say happy field day. Um, George, in for HAI, Tom would like to say thank you so much. Him and his club appreciated you talking to them, and um, they all ranted and raved about you. Well, thanks, Amanda. I had a great time visiting with uh, with Tom's club up in Ohio uh, this past week. You know, it's the first club meeting I think I've done on Skype where they were using uh, a type of Wi-Fi, and we didn't have a single glitch uh, no problems whatsoever. So I, I don't know who their internet service provider was, but I've got to find that out. Very good. Now, that is amazing. Um, I'm even at home and sometimes my video starts to buffer. So that's a good call. And uh, we just realized that our server room has been open the whole night. So if you guys heard a bunch of rrr, 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 I really apologize. Uh, sorry about that. Hey, it's field day. It's time to go break out the broads, break out the radios break out the wires and make some contact. CQ field day, CQ field day. Everyone have a great weekend. Hope to work you all. Uh, we'll send it over to you, Don. Thank you. Yeah, field day is, uh, is a lot of fun. I look forward to it every year and uh, we're going to go out and try to make some contacts. So well, we want to, is there anything you, you've seen on any of the ham nations, you want to go to the wiki page. That's wiki.twit.tv uh, and then go and search for the ham nation wiki and Dan N9LVS manages that for us and uh, a lot of times we forget to thank him so Dan we want to make sure that that we got in tonight and, and thank you so much for uh, all of your hard work maintaining the wiki page uh, it's a uh, I don't know how you do it um, writing down everything that we say uh, it's, it's amazing you should you should work for the federal government or something but uh, anyway so we'll go around the horn one more time and see if anyone else has anything to add George anything else uh, from you tonight before we uh, wrap it up well, just be listening for November 5, Zulu November Oscar this weekend on field day. If if we don't have thunderstorms here, Don, if we've got thunderstorms going on, all bets are off because we're going to be way back in the woods and uh, we don't want to get down there and get stuck. But 73, we'll give you a full report next week. Awesome. Valerie, over to you. Yeah, I hope to work y'all and 9AW and Jerry also. Jerry, he's a... 
Kicking it off, right? One to three uh, central, uh, the N9AW. Jerry uh, will be in the chair. First man in the chair. So I'll see you guys in two weeks, and I will get back to logging software. So have a great field day, everybody. Awesome. And uh, Amanda, any final words from you tonight? Have a wonderful field day. I'm really looking forward to it. I I love it every year. And Val, I love the tent setup. Uh, unfortunately, I never have a time to go to my tent. Uh, I get about two hours of sleep and that's about it. Um, but thanks for the, the tent setup. That's awesome. <laughs> there you well, go. All right. Yeah, real tent. Uh, I actually have one that's a hinge tent and it wouldn't fit in here. That's the one we're using this year, not this one. But this is an operating tent. That's funny. Awesome. It's still very right. cool. I would imagine that the bands are probably pretty tore up for the HF nets tonight, but uh, uh, 20 meters is what? 14, 2, 7, 8, I think. Something like that. Um, anyway, if they're there, they're there. But you can always uh, you always get on the digital nets. The uh, do drop in. Uh, node 355-800 has the after show net. And also the D-Star net is on now on uh, Reflector 14 Charlie for uh, D-Star and Echo Link users. So there you go. So we'll say good night from South Mississippi. And uh, for everybody else, uh, we'll uh, talk to Bob Heil again next week. And we'll say good night also from Gordon out in California. He had other things to do tonight after he got off. So... Uh, we'll say happy field day, everybody, and we'll see you next week here on Ham Nation. Good night, 7-3. Good night. Happy field day.